thank you. I was waiting for one of my disciples to go. That's my leader. So when they did, I was like, yes, yes. <laughs> thank you, thank you. All right, so we have hit the first of December. Que December, boys. It is time. It is December. It is the month where people lose their minds, not in a good way. Some, of, some in a good way, but many of us, que December, boss, and next minute, like, you know, things go down the drain. So, a very interesting discussion Kenny and them had, and I want you to join out. Like, literally, it is the final youth evening for 2023. This is history, and you're going to talk or join out or be on your phone. What's wrong with you? Look at the verse and be like, what's wrong with you? So, take those cellular numbers. And put your cellular numbers in your pockets. You don't, unless you're taking notes, but even there it's dangerous. And do, tell the person next to you that they're not that interesting for the next, Kayla's more interesting than you, right? For, for the next 20, 30 minutes, right? So we're going to talk about something. And I really do believe that if you get this, you will not only have an amazing end of the year, but you will start the year on such a good note. So my question to you, is how intentional are you with your life, okay? And this is from, the, from January to December. So Kenny asks a question, I'm finished. What, stays, what happens in December stays in December. I don't think so because what happens if you go to a party, someone breaks a bottle on your head, you die. It didn't stay in December and January. Are ah, you back. No, no, you're gone permanently. A decision to go to a club, get drunk and get into a fight killed you permanently. It didn't stay in December. You've lost the next 40 years of your life. You've lost that marriage you should have had. You've lost the children you should have had. You've lost incredible life you should have enjoyed because of one stupid decision. So no, what stays in December, what happens in December does not stay in December. It determines your future. And let me tell you something. There are so many people who destroy their lives in December. 2024 is going to come. They're going to spend the rest of 24 just trying to fix their brokenness. And then what happens? December 2024, they break themselves even more. And then they spend the whole of 2025 trying to fix their broken life. And that's why you go, life is hard. And that's why you say, yo, this year was so tough. And then you, I can't wait for next year. Next year, yo, this year was so bad. I can't wait for the next year. And you wish your life away because you spent your life broken. Because you made stupid decisions, not just in December, but a lot in December. Because we're going to rest mode. But Satan doesn't rest. Satan doesn't go, ah, guys, whoo, what a year. We killed 20 souls. 50 came to hell. Let's have a Christmas party. We're done for the year, people. Wrap up. Put your papers away. Stop your planning. We shall kill people next year. Satan doesn't do that. Satan's like, oh, que December. Let us go up a notch. And the plans increase. And the temptations increase because Satan knows you're no longer on God. You're relaxed. You're no longer protecting your life. You're relaxed. There's no longer youth on a Friday. You're relaxed. And relaxing is good. God relaxed on the seventh day after creating the whole world. Relaxing is not bad. I cannot wait to be on holiday. Okay? There's nothing bad with getting refreshed and relaxing. But let me tell you something. Satan doesn't relax. And December doesn't relax. Your life continues. So, I want everyone to ask this question. I want you to think about it. How intentional am I? I want you to think about it. Everyone say out loud. How intentional am I? So, Here's the deep thing that many of us forget to mention, right? Or to think about. You are either intentionally building the life you want or your life is just happening to you and then you turn back and you go, how did I get here? Why is my life so bad? Why have I got so many regrets? Why am I lonely? Why does no one want to be with me? Why? Because instead of being intentional with your decision making and your life, you just let life happen to you. And you see, that's the danger with social media. TikTok is not demonic. Instagram is not demonic. Facebook, Twitter, they are not demonic. They can be used for demonic things, but they are not demonic. What is the biggest problem with social media? It kills your intentionalism. It kills your time. Because instead of you doing things that take your life forward, instead of you doing things that will take your future to a new level, you're busy watching other people. There's nothing bad with social media, but the problem is you're wasting intentional time. 
instead of being intentional with your life, instead of reading a book and growing your knowledge, instead of getting closer to God, you're watching other people, you're listening to other people's opinions. That's the problem with social media. That's the only problem with social media is it takes away our intention, intentional time. It takes away us goal setting. It makes us comfortable, right? So let's look at this. Everyone knows what trends are. Name some of the, the recent trends on social media. The ceiling challenge. I don't know what the ceiling challenge is. I'm sorry. I've been too intentional doing things. You know? No, I'm just kidding. There's this water challenge, the ceiling challenge. The what? Two, six, nine. Two seats, something. Two seat slide, whatever that is. Now, you are naming some trends I don't know. Okay, I don't know some of these trends. I know other trends where they've been sticking cameras on the roof and then they're dancing with their dogs and they, that's, oh, that's the, that's what it's called. Ah, you learn something new every day. The ceiling challenge. What other challenges? I don't know. There's many trends. There's always trends. Some of them are really stupid trends, but there's always trends, right? But here's the thing. I want you to think about this. So many people, they see a trend, right? They immediately hop onto the trend. I'm also going to put a camera in my bathroom and I'm going to just start, you know? Or I'm going to go onto a train and I'm going to put my phone on white mode and I'm going to just do weird things while my hair is blowing, whatever the challenge is. But with that, do you understand that you're not calculating your time? You're not calculating what you're spending your time on, what you're doing with your, your life. What you're doing with your life, you're just following a trend. You're just letting life happen to you, and you're not calculating anything. You're just, your life is just happening. There's no intentional stuff to your life. So let's look at a few examples. There is a trend, not really on social media, but a trend that's been there since, I don't know. I don't think, maybe the 70s, I don't know. There is a trend that when you're young, you know, go to a club, try some drugs, try some cigarettes. I mean, you're only trying it once. I remember going to ballet. Ballet, you're supposed to be super healthy and fit. I went to a ballet class. Why are we playing deep music when I'm talking about ballet? Okay, sure. So I went to a ballet class and I remember go afterwards trying a cigarette. I was in high school. And she's like, just try it once, man. It's just once. It can't harm you. And I remember thinking, yo, if my mom finds out, she will beat me. That's the only reason I said no. Because I was like, my parents will kill me, okay? Like the, the administering of the wooden spoon, they took it easy on Sashi. But with me, I got it till I was 16. So there was no way I was going to try that luck with my parents. There were other areas where I, could, I wanted to push my limits. I wasn't prepared to wear cigarettes. But um, it was just funny to hear how there's that, and there's that mentality all the time. But it's just once. You can't get addicted after trying cigarettes just once. You can't. You just try it. And there is a trend where people take drugs or they drink alcohol. But what you're th not thinking about in that moment, you're letting life happen to you. You're following a trend. But you're not calculating that in 10 years' time, you could be a drug addict. And either you could be a drug addict stealing from their parents ending up on the streets because you've been kicked out, or you could be a drug addict who's trying to hide it, who's falling asleep all the time, they can't control their addiction, and you're starting to look ugly and skinny because you actually not, and it's not funny. No, no, it's not funny. I'm not even playing. Drug addicts look ugly. You look old quickly. But when you're playing around just following a trend, you're not calculating what you're doing to your future. Your kids could grow up with, with our parents one day because of you. You could get cancer because of that and end up dying in huge pain because of one night of a trend or a few nights of a trend, but it's cool. Let's follow the trend. Let's look at what else. We play around in relationships. There's a lot of you who claim you are not in relationships, but you're in like 10 relationships with guys undercover. No, no jokes. I promise you that I used to work in a studio and this guy used to say he was single for two years. And then you hear he's gone out with this guy. He's gone out, I mean, with th that girl. He's gone out with that girl. And in my head, I was like, dude, just because you haven't committed to them, you're in relationships. And I'm telling you right now, listen to me. If you are talking to guys as a girl constantly, you are in a form of a relationship with them because you shouldn't be talking to guys. As a girl, you should have very strict boundaries. If you had a boyfriend and you were talking to other guys all the time, I'd be concerned. Why are you entertaining other guys? Why do you have such a need to talk to other guys? And the same with guys. 
If you have a girlfriend, you should not be talking to other girls. You are not meant to be friends if you're in a relationship with other girls. No, because it's not faithful to the person you're with. Okay? I, I'm not, that, I, that's a boundary I've put up. Because how am I going to be faithful to this person if I'm entertaining other people? It's not fair. So many of you are saying that you're not in relationships, but you're going out and you're talking to. You are in relationships. You are in situationships. And then you're wondering why the right person's never coming along. You're wondering why you keep getting disappointed because you're playing games. And you can play games now. But what you forget to remember is when the right person does come, you won't have the faithfulness to stick it out. You will want to, and you will try to, but you would have been in secret conversations for so long, you won't have the ability to stay faithful. It will be a matter of time. You won't want to. You'll love this person, but it will be a matter of time before you're having conversations with other guys and girls while in that relationship with the person you love. Because if you can't build faithfulness and keep your conversations in the light while you're not in a relationship, it will happen when you're in a relationship. You've got to become strict and intentional with your life. Stop having, con why are you, you've got, there's many girls out there, girls. You can have friendships with girls. You don't need to be talking to guys. And you definitely shouldn't be looking for guys' attention if you're in a relationship and vice versa for the guys. Okay, you've got to be intentional. Many people also do this. Before I move on to the next one, you play around. You play around in relationships. And then you finally meet the person that you love. But what happens is they're just like you. And the person you finally fall for and you're prepared to commit to does to you what you've been doing to everyone else around you. It happens. So stop playing games with people's hearts and stop trying to steal other people's girlfriends and boyfriends and actually start being faithful because otherwise it's going to come back to you. So you've got to become intentional. You have to become intentional. If you want to be faithful, if you want to have a relationship that is a huge blessing to you that lasts, you better start putting in the work now because many of you are playing games and you're going to end up very lonely or you're going to have to settle because all the good ones are gone because you were too busy playing games. I'm not even joking. I'm seeing a lot of people my age that's already happening too and people older. You need to learn now. Otherwise, you could end up shutting that door for the rest of your life. And there's nothing wrong with being single, but there's also a blessing of a relationship God has put there for you and you're going to stuff it up. If you're not intentional. Another one. We spend all our money now. I spend it on food. I spend it on clothing. I'm not intentional with my money. I need it now. Take a lot has a 50% special. I need it now. I cannot wait one more day. I will die. I need it now. And then you don't have food for the rest of the month. And you complain that you're broke or you're starving. But what were you doing with your finances? And why do people complain? Because this is not meant to happen. Why do people complain that December is such a broke month? Because you weren't intentional in December. Sorry, January. Why do people complain you have bread with candles in it? Why? What happened between January and November? What makes them different? Nothing. What's the difference? People become stupid and unintentional with their finances and you suffer in January. You shouldn't be broke in January. January should be a good month for you because you've still saved in December. You've had fun, but you've still saved. You've still been intentional with your money. See, little things. I can go on and on for another 10 years. If you are not intentional with your life, you will watch your life pass you by and life will just happen to you. You won't build the life you want. And that's one of the biggest dangers of social media. You can spend three hours scrolling. You have wasted three hours of your life where you could have built something where you could have grown yourself. Once again, there is nothing wrong with social media, but why three hours? Why are you so addicted to looking at other people's lives when you should be intentional about building your life? Social media is one of our biggest killers because you're so busy being consumed with other people. Your life is passing you by and you're not building anything. You're doing nothing with your life and you have no ambition to because I just want to be an influencer. I want free packages. They're not rich. I know re influencers, Percy, they're not rich. They end up SMSing you or messaging you for transport money. They ain't rich. So wake up and actually get something that will build a future so you can have a good family and walk in prosperity like God wants you to. Will you all be millionaires? I'm sorry, no. But 
You could still walk in a life that is prosperous. Break out of poverty. Social media will not break your poverty. So you've got to be intentional. And once again, it's nothing wrong with social media. But don't spend your whole time in December on social media. That is a sad life. That really is. So be intentional with your life. Okay? It's so easy to get sidetracked. And this is the problem. This is what people don't apply in December. Yes, you need to rest. It's good for you. It's good for you so that you start the new year so refreshed and energetic. But at the same time, is the way you're relaxing glorifying God? Is the way you're relaxing benefiting your future? Is the way you're relaxing building your future? So let me give a really stupid example. So me and Sash had a birthday on Tuesday. And um, we decided last year, you know, our birthdays were a little bit, you know, they were nice. But it wasn't amazing. So we decided this year we're going to plan our birthdays. And my company is amazing. They give me 40 days leave a year. So I took my birthday week off. And I decided every day I'm not going to sit on the couch. I'm not going to look at social media and waste my, my off days away. I'm going to rest a bit. I'm going to sleep in a bit. But I'm going to plan to be busy. And Tuesday we went out for lunch in the evening, I did stuff with my boyfriend. In the next day, I went out to meet a friend from the choir in 3C um, in Rosebank. And then I came back and we went out for a family dinner. And Thursday, what did I do on Thursday? I went shopping on Thursday. I went, for my, I went for a pedicure on Thursday. I loved the life, guys. But the thing is, I, was bu- I wasn't rushing, but I was busy. I I had planned. I didn't want to just sit around doing nothing because I know there's going to be days in December where I'm going to want to sit around and do not nothing, but, you know, like relax. And this week I decided I want to be busy. I want to have fun while relaxing. And I relaxed. I came back to work feeling so fresh today. I was ready. I was like, I've got one final week of work left before the end of the year. I'm doing this. Literally one week left. I'm so happy. I'm counting down the days. But I will not have a pointless unintentional December. I'm planning that while I'll be resting, it's not going to be as busy as these past few days because the money will not sustain that, right? You've got to be wise. But I want to have fun. I want to be intentional. And that's the thing. You don't have to destroy your life. You don't have to break your budget. You don't have to do crazy, trend things to keep your life exciting. You can plan and be intentional and you can rest but have a really, really good time. And that's what it's about. God doesn't call you to live a boring life. This week wasn't boring. But I also didn't stuff up my life this week. And that's what he wants for you. And that's just a stupid example. But it's an example to show you if you can just plan. We're going to go out for ice cream this day. We're going to go do a movie at this house to, uh, with our friends tomorrow. As a cell group, we'll do this. I'm going to do this with my parents this day. Because you should prioritize your parents. You guys all forget your parents. You all forget your parents. You ditch your parents because you're too cool. No. You wouldn't be here without your parents. And one day you're going to look like your parents. So... Look at your future. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Well, I'm not kidding. But, you know, make effort to actually spend time with your family. None of you thought of that one. You sit in your bedroom all day for the whole of December. You're in your bedroom on your phone. Go and sit with your family. Actually get to know your family. Hi, I'm Kayla. (laughs) So, mother, tell me about yourself. Because that's how much you neglect your families and you shouldn't. You should prioritize your families as well. So we've got to be intentional. Listen to this. Ephesians 5 verse 15 to 17 says, listen to this. Look carefully how you walk. Not as unwise, but as the wise making the best use of time. Because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of God is. I love this. Make the best of your time. You know what, what like I'm seeing like never before is how we waste our time. Whether we waste our time watching a series, keeping up with the Kardashians, Love is Blind, Selling Sunsets. I see you people. I see you exposing yourself. No, just kidding. We, we watch other people be dramatic and stupid and you want to punch them, but you'll never meet them. We spend our time scrolling on social media and that's why I deleted TikTok. 
I used to be on TikTok. And eventually I got to a point where I realized I was wasting so much time on TikTok when I could have been doing other things. And so I deleted it to remove the temptation because I was like, I want my life to be so much more than this. I want people to be watching my life. I don't want to be watching other people's lives. And for that to happen, I need to start getting off social media more and being setting goals, planning, being enjoying life to the fullest, being intentional. So on Wednesday... I, I wanted to take lots of pictures with my boyfriend. And eventually my dad was like, Kayla, it's not all about pictures. Hmm. And my boyfriend looked at me like, you know, you must enjoy the moment. And I was like, whatever, let's take some more pictures. But, but <laughs> when I went back, I was like, you know what? Sometimes we're so busy trying to show off or take pictures. And I wasn't trying to show off. I just really like taking pictures with my family and my boyfriend. I really do. And I can go back and look at them and like how much I love them. But, but sometimes we're so busy trying to prove ourselves or show ourselves off or capture the moment. We don't even live in the moment. Get off your phone and start spending time with your family. Get off your phone and start enjoying life in the moment. I'm not saying throw your phones away. Phones are a blessing. Social media is a blessing. But I'm trying to get a point across of be intentional. Because this December, you're either going to come back in January a better, stronger person, ready and excited for the year, or you're going to start the new year like, like a permanent bubbleless, and you're going to be tired and broken and like already over the year, and the year hasn't even started, right? So we have to be intentional. And so I want to end with this. The most important thing, and I, you can ask my, my, my girls in Sal, I've been drilling this into them for the past three weeks. We've been preparing for December since November. I've been like, girls, this is what's happening. You've got to be intentional in your relationship with God. Because December, you wake up, you're like, ah, I'll do it later. Then you get busy, or you forget, or the evening comes, you're like, ah, I don't feel like I need to sleep, I'll do it tomorrow. And before you know it, you've spent the whole December not spending time with God. And as a result, it's very easy to make bad decisions because you haven't been spending time with God. And so you've got to be intentional in your relationship with God. I've said to them, you can wake up at 10 a.m., but you don't eat till you've spent time with God. And because you have more time, spend an extra five or 10 minutes with God. Time that you wouldn't have while you're working or you're at school. Time you wouldn't have during the year. And you're not going to feel like it. You're going to feel like just resting and like, ah, spending time with God is so much work. No. You know, when Kenny said he's going to lock himself in his room the whole of December, I was like, dude, you've got a fiance. I will come beat you up. Okay. When you're in a relationship, you don't have such rights anymore. Like you, you, be, you have to be intentional to build your relationship, to make an effort with the person. Just like you've got to be intentional in making an effort with your family. And just like you've got to be intentional in making an effort with God. Because if you're not, you will lose your relationship with God. There are many people who started this year with God who are no longer here. They weren't intentional. And there's no judgment. We've got to learn from that. Will you be here next year this time? Will you be closer to God than you are right now? If you're in a bad way, will you be strong with God? If you're in a good way, will you be even stronger with God? Or are you going to allow yourself to go backwards? That doesn't happen by mistake. When people say they had affairs and Satan made me do it. No, you weren't intentional. And you stuffed up the most important relationship besides God in your life because you weren't intentional. You started chatting with the opposite sex in your relationship. You see, not intentional. You started entertaining other thoughts, not intentional. And you cheated. And you destroyed a beautiful thing. So can you see how we've got to be intentional in everything we do, but especially in our relationship with God? You need to fiercely apply the blood, and you should be applying the blood and fighting for your family more than you're fighting for yourself. There is a war, people. December is going to be a war. And the question is, are you going to make it out December enjoying life, good and refreshed, or are you going to make it out December destroyed? One of the average statistics of our globe, not even South Africa, of the globe, of brokenness and destruction. Another girl pregnant. Another guy killed. Another drug addict. What's your story going to be? Because I think it would be very sad if your life doesn't end well. Because you weren't intentional. So I want everyone to close their eyes. If your relationship with God is not strong, you're struggling. Your relationship with God is on and off 
up and down and you haven't really been spending time with God. You haven't made the effort, but you, because you haven't felt like it, you haven't, pulled, you haven't followed through with it. Maybe you were in a good place, but something happened recently and it took you back. It knocked the life out of you and you're struggling. You're struggling to connect with God. You're struggling not to question or blame God and you've pulled away. Or maybe you have never accepted him. You've always thought you're too bad. You've always thought that you'll, come, you'll give your life when you've fixed your life. That's not going to happen. He, he's the only one that can fix you. If you've never accepted him before or you once had a good relationship with God and you've gone backwards and you need to come back to him or you believe your relationship with God is not intimate, it's not strong, it's not real and you want it to be real. You want it to be a strong relationship. All eyes are closed. It's a very personal moment. So don't worry what people think. This is the biggest and most important decision you'll ever make. If that's you, I want you to put up your hand right now. If you want to say, you know what? My relationship with God is not in a good way or it could be better or it used to be in such a good way and I lost it. Especially entering December, I want to come back. I want a fresh start. I want God to be real to me. I want to grow stronger. I want to hear him talk to me. I want him to restore me. I want him to save me from myself so I don't destroy my life. If that's you, put up your hand. There are a whole lot of hands that have gone up, but I really think there's more people because a lot of you come to church and you call yourself Christian, but your lifestyle is complete opposite. It's a complete opposite lifestyle, and that's a problem. So if you are living a double life, a fake life, you claim you're Christian, but hey, you're going to a party after this. You claim you're Christian, but mm, there's some drugs waiting for me at home. You claim you're a Christian, but you're gossiping about every girl in South Africa. Whatever it is, whatever you, there's so many, then I want you to put up your hand. And there's more hands that should be going up because there's a lot of us that I think have stepped away from God this year, either because things got hard or because we just weren't intentional. And it's time now God's saying, I love you. I want to restore you. I want to give you the best life, but you've got to be intentional about building your relationship with me. You've got to be intentional about staying in church. You've got to be intentional about reading your Bible and studying it and really seeking me and talking to me, applying the blood every day. You've got to be intentional. Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else? All right. I want everyone to stand. And if you put up your hand, I want you to come to the front. I want you to grab your belongings. Don't be embarrassed or shy. We are cheering you on. We've all had to make this decision. I want you to come to the front. Come running, come running. And if you didn't put up your hand, but you think you need to come, or you're standing next to someone and you think they might want to come, then ask them, do you want to come? Grab their hand and bring them to the front. Don't force them. But if you're not feeling comfortable to come on your own, ask your friend to come with you. Because we're about to start a very intense, amazing, relaxing time where there's going to be a lot of temptation. You want to make sure that you are going to be on the winning streak. You want to make sure you get this right. So is there anyone else? Look at your friend and ask them, do you want me to come with you or can you come with me? Because this is not, and can I just say this for guys, this is not a girly thing or a weak thing. For the girls, this is not an embarrassing thing. This is your future. This is your eternity at stake here. And this is the most important relationship you'll ever have. For a lot of you, God's not real to you. You know about him, but he's not real to you. That's a problem. That means you need to question, am I really saved? Because God should be very real to me. I should be building a relationship with him every day. So last time, is there anyone else? that wants to come with a friend or bring their friend or anyone else that wants to take that brave step and say, I need to fix my life. I need Jesus. I want a very deep, strong relationship with him. I actually cannot do this without him. I can't break habits. I can't fix myself. I can't make myself better. Only he can. And I want that relationship. I want to be restored. I want to come back to him. There's more people coming forward. That's awesome. Is there anyone else? Yes, let's give them a hand. But is there anyone else? Amazing. Amazing. And can I just say for every single one of you that came forward, I salute you because it's not easy in front of people to come forward and yet you took that brave step and that's the beginning. If you can make more intentional brave steps like this in December, you are going to enter January um, on, on 2.0 version of yourself. 
you're going to enter January and people are going to be shocked at how good your life is. But also, you're going to be shocked at how good your life is. I came back to work today and people were like, oh my word, you're glowing. I was like, I know. <laughs> it's not just a birthday glow. I don't know. It's just, you know, I'm glowing. Thank you. No, I didn't say I know. I'm just kidding. But, but that's what God wants to do. You come back and people are like, you're glowing. Even the guys, you're glowing. You're handsome glowing. Don't know what the male version of glowing is. So you're just, you're, you're, you had a glow up. A buff up. There we go. You're buffing. So, so, <laughs> so I really want to encourage you guys. If you're scared, you can't trust yourself. Get someone to check on you every day. Did you read your Bible? But be intentional about building your relationship with God and he will reveal himself to you. And he'll do amazing things to you. So let's all pray together. Everyone close their eyes. And I want everyone to repeat this after me. Say, dear Lord God, thank you so much for your unconditional love. Thank you for never giving up on me. Thank you that you have the most exciting plan and future for my life. God, I surrender. Please reveal yourself to me. Show me who you are, that my relationship with you would become the most real relationship I have. Give me a desire, a craving, a hunger for your word, for you, for church to spend time with you. I need you, Jesus. And please give me the strength and discipline to be intentional, to make the right decisions. I love you, Jesus. I declare that you are the Lord and Savior of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we give them one more hand? Amen. Amazing. Amazing. All right. So there are some, some, they're waving. They're at the back there. Just a few guys. They're waiting just to pray with you anything you need so you can start making your way out. And um, we are really proud of you. So congratulations. You started December the 1st. On the best note you could have. Yes, come on, as loud as you can. Let's give them a hand. Yes, amen. Amazing. So, so amazing. All right, so we're going to close in prayer, but we have church on Sunday. We have the carol service next week, Sunday. So you better make sure that you come, and then you can go to Makaya or wherever you're going, but you must come to carol service first and make sure you come to church and you bring people with you. Yes? There's no evening service this week. Oh, yes. So there is an evening service this week, but next week there's no evening service. We are only, the carol service is so big that we're having the carol service and then you're going to go home and sleep so nicely because it was so huge, right? So there's no evening service from next week. But let's just close in prayer. Lord, please bless us this December. Help us to be intentional. Give us the strength to exercise self-control, to cut out sin to make the right decisions, break the power of sin over our lives, surround us with the right friendships, the right voices, the right people, protect us from making decisions that will destroy us. We need your help. And I pray that you'd bless this December, that we would have a restful December, the best December yet, while relaxing and having fun and doing things, that we would do it in such a way where we would start January on a new level. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.